Capitalism is a remarkable system. On the one hand, it produces remarkable wealth and fantastic technology by which to create more wealth. And on the other hand, it creates new forms of depravity, humiliation, poverty, hopelessness. So hopelessness and poverty and iPhones being created by the same production line. That's capitalism. It's a system that produces its own crisis, that constantly undermines itself. And when there is a crisis, whole generations of people are thrown into the dustbin of history. They get angry. It is at that point that the left's failure to organize humanity against the misanthropy of capitalism feeds into fascism, because fascism is all about harvesting the bitter crop of discontent since our generation's 1929, which of course took place in 2008. The number one task of the establishment was to shift the bankers' losses onto the shoulders of the weakest citizens, effectively transfer huge wealth to the bankers from the have-nots. But austerity leads to very low levels of demand, which leads to very low levels of investment. So you give all this money to the bankers, whether you printed it or actually transferred it, they look at the plebs out there, they realize that oh, these people can't buy their stuff, so they don't invest in production. But what they do is they use the money that has been transferred to them and they buy back their own shares. So their assets go up, share prices, bonuses and so on, house prices go through the roof, and at the same time there's no investment. So this contributes to humanity's failure to do anything about climate change, because unless you invest in green technologies it won't happen. And it also contributes to the perpetuation of the economic disaster that then requires more austerity. But in order to continue along the lines of this catastrophic route, you need more doses of authoritarianism in order to impose those idiotic policies on the many. You have the nationalist and international on the one hand and the international of horror on the other, the bankers, large corporations and a political class that has been fed by those oligarchs, groomed by them, lobotomized by them, and of course the media that are owned by the same oligarchs, whose job is to peddle the views of the establishment. But at the same time there is the nationalist international, which is those who supposedly are full of rage against the international of horror, but who in the end use the discontent that austerity and authoritarianism creates for them to become strongmen. Just like in the 1930s and in the 1920s, the Nazis uh, railed against the bankers, railed against capitalism even, in order to become the lapdogs of uh, the worst of the capitalists. We're talking about the Trumps, the Salvinis, the Farages, the Le Pens, and so on and so forth. Now, the reason why the left is the only political force that did not benefit from its capacity to predict uh, the 2008 crisis is because we have a remarkable capacity for disunity, incoherence, fragmentation. Anybody who's watched the first sequences in the life of Brian knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's time that we get our act together, that we organize and emulate the manner in which the fascists and the bankers manage to collaborate internationally. The establishment is astonishing at propaganda. They utilize words like liberty and competition in order to promote exactly the opposite. So what we of the left need to do is we need firstly to expose the hypocrisy and secondly to steal back what was taken away from us. So we need to reclaim liberty when it comes to economic decision-making. Now nobody has any decision-making powers or freedom or choice except for the very, very few who have the capacity to transfer their losses onto the shoulders of everyone else. We need to target three areas. The first one is poverty. We need to create anti-poverty programs and we need to do this through the weaponization of existing institutions like, for instance, in Europe, magnificent profits made by the European Central Bank through its quantitative easing program should be funding the fight against poverty. Second, we need 5% of GDP to be invested in the green transition, immediately. Thirdly, we live in a world where money flows freely and human beings are behind bars. We need to reverse that. We need to have freedom of movement for people and capital controls. We need to revamp the international financial system, the level of the very, very short term, the medium term and the long term. But at the same time, we need to plan for post-capitalism, to force large companies to give a proportion of their shares to a global equity fund, international equity fund, a European one, a British one, a public equity fund. The privatization of socially produced capital must end. We must begin to socialize socially produced capital. Hope lives eternally in our hearts. We cannot um, do anything about it, thankfully. As long as there is something inside of us, which is the core of our humanity, we are going to maintain hope against all evidence, because all the evidence is very bleak. But um, we have no right uh, to be empirical about it. Unlike the weather, which is independent of what we think about it, history is made by people who don't give a damn about predictions and who do what they think is right. Support Double Down News on Patreon.
unless we create our own progressive media. We have no chance of fighting against the rabid propaganda of an establishment that is absolutely efficient when it comes to brainwashing people. It is what will make the difference between success and failure for progressive movements across the world.